It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor and analyst, and Mr. Richard Waddell, management editor of Business Week magazine. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Mr. Charles F. Brannan, former Secretary of Agriculture. Mr. Brannan, our viewers are particularly interested in the price of meat and butter this week, sir. And I don't know of any man better qualified to discuss the prices of those two things. Because, sir, our viewers remember that you were the Secretary of Agriculture on, in the Truman administration. And, of course, now the new administration is in trouble over falling meat prices. Now, sir, uh, why are meat prices falling now? Mr. Huey, there are uh, several uh, reasons. One of the main reasons is that uh, the uh, uh, range conditions in the country have been uh, poor and have been deteriorating for some period of time, uh, which means that uh, the man who produces the uh, the first animal, the animal, uh, the animal on his road to the butcher shop, has uh, found it necessary to cut down his his uh, numbers because his range won't carry them. That uh, set against the background of the fact that we have built our uh, beef animal numbers, our livestock numbers in this country, to the highest uh, point in, I guess, all our history. Well, that's, that, uh, by building them to the highest point in our history, brings me to this point, sir. Was it your policy, while you were Secretary of Agriculture, to encourage abundance, meaning to build, to, to get as many beef cattle as possible in the country? Yes, it was. Uh, the, uh, the philosophy of abundance, which I think is inherent uh, really in the present law, uh, simply uh, is founded upon the, the idea that if you produce uh, uh, a large quantity or have a substantial quantity of a given commodity, you uh, th thereby begin to uh, certainly control price or prevent well, runaway prices. Can you prices. give us an illustration of, uh, of how this works and what is different perhaps between your philosophy of farm policy and, Mr. and Mr. Benson's? Well, uh, I, w I would say, uh, uh, let me say first of all this about, uh, about the uh, present administration and Mr. Benson's farm policy. I'm not going to be critical of him. Uh, it is uh, as important to me as a citizen that he solve the problems, uh, much more important to me as a citizen and to you and all the rest of our people, uh, than it is that we gain some political advantage by, uh, as a result of his failure to solve them. I hope he's able to solve them, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'd like to be as useful as I can well, in the solution. But, but, sir, is there some basic difference, as you understand it, between your philosophy of government and his philosophy of and government can you in, in relation? Uh, I would say that, uh, that uh, his statement and... Uh, to simplify it and bring it concise as, as we can, the use of the word disaster insurance uh, indicates a very direct uh, takeoff at a tangent from the existing philosophy under the existing law. The price support laws of the country uh, have been designed to maintain purchasing power uh, in American farmers to the end that they are able to take care of the basic resources without which this country cannot be strong. Now, therefore, uh, we, have, we have tried to keep uh, a fair return to the American farmer while encouraging him to produce abundantly. Uh, I understand uh, from, the, from the disaster insurance idea that you wouldn't help the farmer until his prices had gotten so low that he'd lost his purchasing power to begin with, and about all you'd give him is enough to put him back in business the next well, year as a farmer. If that's true, why is it that the, uh, the American Farm Bureau and the National Grange both have indicated their support of Mr. Benson, uh, uh, Benson's policies as so far indicated. Well, first of all, let, let's They recognize. represent farmers. Uh, uh, I, I, they, uh, the, the hierarchy of the American Farm Bureau and of, uh, of the Grange 
uh, have a philosophy which, in my opinion, is not the philosophy of, the, of many of their membership. Is that, would you That's, call that a low support philosophy? It's a low to no support philosophy. Low to no, and, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's proper to identify your philosophy as a high support philosophy. Yes, as a strong support uh, of philosophy. And now you were explaining the idea of the, of the hierarchy. Well, uh, they, uh, the, um, the, the existing law, or, or the strong price support philosophy, of course, was the philosophy of the membership and the hierarchy of the American Farm Bureau until it changed leadership. Now, uh, if the membership changed leadership knowing that they were going to a low to no price support philosophy, uh, I'm, I would be doubtful that they would have ever made the change you, they made. Do you, you think Mr. Benson's policy, uh Although uh, his actions, uh, he's supporting the law, uh, but his disaster statement would indicate something else. Uh, are those policies his own, or are they a uh, administration policy? Uh, 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 are are they uh, something that, in other words, is he the man who must be blamed if there is any blame to be placed? Well, I'm I'm confident that uh, Mr. Benson is expressing an administration policy. And who are the men do you think who are fashioning that policy? Sir? The the president, uh, of course, must be the final uh, uh, architect, or must say the final yes or no. I think advising him, of course, is his brother Milton, is uh, Mr. Alan Klein, president of the American Farm Bureau Federation, and uh, uh, a few people, all of whom are. Uh, low or no price support people. Well, is it is it uh, fair to say, sir, that there's a difference in degree? I mean, we use this high support and low support. Uh, you, you wanted the Department of Agriculture to assume more responsibility for uh, assuring abundance or assuring the farmer a return. And, and whereas uh, your, your successor now, Mr. Benson, wants to assume, wants the Department of Agriculture to assume less responsibility is that a, a uh, Mr. Hume, I, I, uh, I wouldn't say that was, was quite the right description. Uh, I, I think uh, it is the, the people's concern to maintain stability and high-level production in farm, uh, farm commodities. Now, uh, maybe price support isn't the mechanism, but it's the best that anybody has thought of. And it is essential. For example, take this question of milk that we were talking about a few minutes ago. Uh, we have an excess of milk at this season of the year always. Now, uh, do we, uh, the, the question is, do you allow the price of milk to go so low as to penalize the farmers who have produced the abundance now? Or uh, do you find a device by means of which you can encourage them to produce this abundance, uh, pass that, uh, the benefit of the abundance onto the American consumer without uh, making the, the, the farmer share all of the financial well, what, responsibility. What, what happens to the dairy farmer if the price of milk goes too low? Well, he, he goes out of business. He sells his cows. And, 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 and remember, it will take you as long to get a new cow back into production of milk as it takes to build the biggest battleship we've ever floated. It'll take him two and a well, half years. And if he sells his cows for, for, for beef or bologna, uh, they aren't going to be producing next and, year. And it's, and, it's, season. and it's your belief, sir, that the present administration, the Eisenhower administration, is not evidencing enough concern for the preservation of those herds. I, I think so. Uh, that, I think if I were to say anything critical, I probably would, would run along that line. Uh, let me say it another way. Uh, I think the American people should always take their risk on having a little more than we need than, than having, uh, taking their risk on having a little less than we need of our food commodities. Well, that brings up a question. Um, do you think there, are, there is, has been a decline and some, uh, uh, some concern among the farm groups about, in prices, about prices? Do you think that this price decline in farm commodities is significant? Does it uh, historically, uh, a drop in farm prices uh, bodes a recession or a downturn? Do you think that's what we have to fear in this? Is well, historically, uh, in, in practically all of the depressions uh, that have come to this country, uh, at least the ones in modern times, the farmer's prices have gone down first, gone down farthest, and stayed down the longest. So uh, there is something uh, in the present indications to, uh, to watch with great, uh, great concern. Now, I, I, I don't want by any stretch of imagination to say that we've reached uh, catastrophic uh, 
Do you, uh, do you foresee, sir, do you think that the farmers of America are likely to suffer in the next, uh, in the foreseeable future, in the next year or two? Uh, it's, it's much too early to say, uh, as far as I can tell. Do you think, to our viewers, sir, do you think that the price of food is going to continue to go down? Do you think the price of milk will go down, the price of meat will go down? No, uh, uh, I'm uh, not to consumers. Uh, if, the, if the drought continues out in the western area, there may be further liquidations of, of cattle, which would cause a further reduction uh, of uh, return to farmers. Of but that isn't always reflected to consumers. Prices were coming down for almost uh, 18 months uh, to farmers for, for beef animals. At the same time, uh, actually, some prices of uh, meat or prices of some cuts were going up. You bring up a point there. Senator Taft uh, has said recently that this farm problem, if there is a problem, uh, is not a, a, a Republican uh, problem, but the one that, that uh, they inherited from the Democrats because the prices have been falling for about two years at the farm level. Well, let, let me put it this way. Um, uh, just, just plain fact, uh, the, the price of beef did not go but to 90% of parity during the Democratic administration, well, and there was no law which would have let us do well, anything I'm until it did. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Brown, and our time is up. Thank you very much for being with us this evening, sir. The opinions that you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Lone Gene Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Mr. Richard Waddell. Our distinguished guest was Mr. Charles F. Brannan, former Secretary of Agriculture. Do you know when Easter comes this year? Well, here is a rough rule. Easter is the first Sunday after the full moon, after the first day of spring. Spring begins, here's the full moon, and here's Easter Sunday, April the 5th. Now, how about giving someone near and dear to you a magnificent new Longines watch to wear on Easter Sunday? You know, giving a Longines is almost like selecting a watch made to your special order because every year Longines produces literally hundreds of new and exclusive styles and models. This has always been a Longines policy, because we realize that those who buy Longines watches expect such exclusiveness. Above and beyond faultless performance, above and beyond unparalleled accuracy, a Longines watch offers pride of possession, for a Longines is in fact the world's most honored watch, the only one of the world's finest watches to win so many honors for excellence elegance and accuracy at World's Fairs and in observatory accuracy competitions. For Easter, for an anniversary, for a birthday, or for any important occasion, throughout the world, no other name on a watch means so much as Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, the television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Wetnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Wetnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. Sunday nights, it's Ed Sullivan's Toast of the Town on the CBS television network.